but I'm not going to pick it up because it'll be a nightmare to put it back into the holder. So what I'll do is I'll just set this up and then we'll just sort of take it from there. <clears throat> Hello everyone, um, so after the ruling pen work last night, I decided to uh, do some copper plate script uh, this morning, which um, proved to be a little bit more difficult. <laughs> so you're not seeing me because <clears throat> if I turn this around, you'll only see up my nostrils <laughs> uh, because the camera is in a jig. Uh, so what I thought I would do is, as I was going to start practicing, uh, um, I thought that what I would do is I would just start writing some copper plate just to get me back into the frame of mind for working on the manual. Uh, now let's see, we just might need to adjust the light a little bit here. Give me a second. Um, there we go. So I'm, I'm not really going to talk um, as I just want to get into the, uh, let's see how it's, uh, sorry, sorry guys. can't really see what I'm doing because the camera is right in my face. Um, just go over it. Oh, there's, that's better. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is something that I like to do when I do the letter T. So I use a little bit of emphasis, which is a little bit of wasting here. So the top is wider than the uh, bottom. I'm sorry, than the middle. Because um, I think it makes for a nicer letter form, a slightly sort of sexier letter form. Oh, thank you, Talmo. So in the manual, I make a distinction between the, um, between two types of strokes, which were made historically. So this is a direct stroke, where we go. Let's just get that. Where we go there, there. We have an indirect stroke where we go. Now, 
Now, there are different ways to produce this stroke. So this is called a swelled stroke. And the swelled stroke can be produced by... So I've just changed the angle of the nib. I hope you could see that. So I've gone from here to right on the axis of the script. So that allows for the nib to spread more easily. Let's just move this up a little bit. So I'm going to double the height because I'm just testing the, the nib because I haven't written with this nib for a little while. So, you know, I hope you notice when I start something, if I make a mistake, I just stop. I don't continue. I don't go back over that stroke. So this is a Hunt 22B, and I'm doing this at, what is that, 16 millimeters, 1.6. So I've also flattened the angle of the nib, I'm, I'm not sort of here, not. so if this is the page here, my pen is normally, oh, that's interesting, my nib is normally at about 55 degrees. Sometimes it's up a little bit more. So instead of it being at 55, it's more like 75 degrees. So if the nib is this low to the page, the tines will spread more easily, so you get a bigger shape. So that is now over 2, 4, 16, and what's that? 4, so 20. And let's try it a little bit higher. Whoa. So that takes us to... Whoa. So this is 8, and 8, and 8, and 4. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of practicing and um, getting back into the flexibility of the nib. Without damaging the nib. Now I was talking about how to, how to actually use this tool to write with. One of the things you might want to try doing is some people rock over to the side so notice, this is, you can see the top of the nib. You can see the reservoir. Some people rock over to the side. To get a slightly sort of flatter. See how flat the inside here is. Um, let's try it with the nib straight on. So, with the nib straight on, you get a really flat inside. Whereas with hair, I don't know if I could zoom in a little bit more. Oh, there we go. I know it's a little bit pixelated. Sorry about that. Do you see how ragged that edge is on the inside? And do you see on this side how it's not nearly as ragged? Because I'm using a pointed flexible nib and it requires pressure. Um, your ink split away from the nib. What do you mean? Why does it split away? Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, hi, Wayne. You need to come by the studio and get those books and Egyptian hieroglyphs. <laughs> I know I haven't really been around. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
So I'm just cleaning the nib. So let's go back. Just gonna reduce the size a little bit more so I don't run off the page. So this is how I normally warm up for when I'm sort of wanting to get back into copper plate script, obviously not with a camera in front of my face. Um, And I try to to warm up larger. I haven't done any uh, copper plates for a while. Um, I mean, with a nib because I've been too busy writing um, notes in the manual and. So I'm at the bottom of the page, which makes it a little bit difficult to keep the page from moving. So as I have to do a little bit of flourishing to, oh, I'm using a, what ink am I using? Uh, I'll just write it down here. Oh no, this is definitely not the Kurtaki Sumi. I mean, the Sumi, the Vermilion is, is, is much denser than this. You can see a lot more transparency here. Um, so once I've done some writing, I then work on, so turn the pen so that the nib is perpendicular to the baseline. And I generally don't do pen lifts between, um, you know, within a word. So if I write large, so I've not done a, a lift there. Um, maybe I'll zoom in on that a little bit. So notice I've just sort of dropped the angle of the nib.
So what I do at the bottom is I get to the bottom and I release this way. So the tine, so you lean back this way at the bottom. So you leave, uh, so at the top you do this. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the top you do this. Uh, little stroke. So the little stroke is as wide as you want the nib to be. As that stroke to be. And then you lean to the other side. When you do it slowly, it doesn't really work um, because it, it pulls on the paper. So you go and... Where does that ink come from? So you go and... One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, sorry about that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or you go and one, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, sorry, that was off the camera. Let's try it again. I'm going to turn it. So I've turned the camera a little bit, uh, I've turned the page a little bit so you can see what's happening at the tines of the nib. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Four, five, and six. So I'm releasing quickly so that you can see what happens when you release too quickly. But of course, because I've turned the, the page uh, and I've not turned myself, it's a little bit of a problem. Um, or the grid printed. Um, you could download the grid on the website. Uh, so we'll go, let's do this again. One and two and three, four and five and six, seven and eight and nine. So, um, so that gives you a little bit of, a little bit of a idea of what I do when I'm to warm up. So I, I, I do sort of technical exercises. I also do this exercise, which I find really helpful, uh, which is not going to look the same because the camera's in the way. So I go one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, sorry about that. One, two, three. And one and two and three. One and two and three. And then I go. One, two. And then from there, I'll need a slightly newer nib. Which reminds me, I need to change this nib. So I then go. Okay, so so hope that hope that that's a little bit helpful. Uh, as you can see, the bits of the manual all over the place, and you know, I just sort of not reworking the layout of the ligatures, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Uh, some illustration work. Uh, some new uh, letter forms for the comparative analysis page on the version, uh, what's it called? On the um, uh, variations. So we have different, three different types of uh, 18th century letters. And I'm also going to include some 18th century Italian rather than uh, 19th, uh, 19th or 20th century Italian. 
Um, the anatomy of the minuscules is completed. This is just my workup sheet, which we have, we've already put in. So I thought it would be nice for that to um, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I was just looking at somebody's comment. Um, and uh, obviously you've seen bits and pieces of the manual. There's more of it sitting around there. Uh, we've just restructured We've just restructured quite a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the, uh, what's it called, uh, four fold symmetry, so that it's um, easier to understand, a little bit simpler. There's more exercises for you to practice with, and um, and just a, a lot more stuff to have to deal with. Um, oh, sorry, I, I'm not going to go back and set the, the jig up and the camera up in the jig it's it, it's just too much hassle right now um uh right well i mean i, I i'm not going to show that because it's like i said I, i'm not going to set this up again um i there are some pictures in the which are going to be in the manual we, we've taken tons of photos i could show you those um show different posture positions no, I don't think we'll have it out in time for Christmas because we ran into some technical issues with one of the a, a piece of software we were using, um, which we fixed. So here are some of the images. So we took, as you can see, we took tons of images of hand holes and how to sit. And um, so, for instance, these ones are quite good. Um, so you can see my foot is on the back of the chair there and it's flat on the front. So this leg is bent, that leg is straight. So it's, there's, 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 there's quite a lot of detailed information. There's quite a lot of detailed information on the, um, on the pages for the um, position, posture and placement. So, uh, so you can see how to sit, where to sit, there are different, video, uh, there are different images on handholds, different types of handholds. There's a, a, a spread for right-handers and opposite that is a spread for left-handers. So you can compare how a left-hander holds a tool as well as how a right-hander holds a tool. Um, so uh, <laughs> the new copper plate Bible, that's, that's very touching Miriam. Um, there is a lot that's gone into it. Um, the book will be available online and you can purchase it and we will post it to you anywhere in the world. I'm being a little bit cryptic about that for a reason, which will, uh, which I will talk to you about <laughs> a little bit later on, um, maybe in a couple, maybe in a month or two. Um, so that, that's, that's quite exciting news, which I, I didn't really expect. All right. Um, as you can see, my brain doesn't, is not really working because <laughs> I've been away from home for so long and the jet lag from Phoenix, which is eight hours, has been a little bit difficult. Um, so stringing together a sentence is not the easiest thing to do right now. Um, and of course my body still thinks I'm in London, but away. So I'm up at five and can't go back to sleep and then I don't go to bed until one o'clock in the morning. Anyway, waffling. Right, back to work. Thank you very much for taking the time to look at some of the, at how I warm up and how I'm getting back into the copper blade script. Have a good um, Sunday if you're just starting. Uh, have a good lunchtime if it's lunchtime. <laughs> have a good afternoon if uh, your afternoon is continuing. And have a good evening if you are finishing up your day. And have a good night's sleep if you're just about to go to bed. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you.